so just let me do a little introduction. Uh, hi, yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today in this uh, dental training. In case uh, you don't know me, uh, my name is Erica, and I'm uh, the sales manager for North America. And doing the presentation today is uh, Ebrima, who's uh, the te technical department manager. And he will be covering some basis, basics about the tensile system, um, how it works, uh, differences, parts, and equipment. And he will go over all this information uh, in a, in a sort of short presentation. And if you want, you have any questions or anything during the presentation, there is a Q&A at the bottom of the, of the screen. Uh, you can write all your questions there. We'll cover them at the end. And also there's a chat. Uh, again, if you have any any comments or any questions, you can write them in there and we'll go over them at the end. And I'll let you start, Prima. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. And thank you everyone for joining us today in, in this Denzo Common Rail um, training. Um, like Erica said earlier, we will talk about how the Denzo Common Rail system works, um, different Denzo pumps and injectors, and also um, spare parts we have in Lucas, as well as uh, the calibration equipment and test benches we do have in, in Lucas to help you to, um, to repair these injectors. Like Erica says, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. We will be more than happy to, um, to answer all the questions you may have. And at the end of the training, if you have any questions, you can let us know uh, during the training as well. All right, with that said, we will begin uh, with the training. All right, um, how Denzel's common rail system works. As we all know, this is a basic information. You, you may already know how the common rail system works, but I think it's, it's also important that we go through it again, all right? Okay, with that said, let's begin with training how the common rail system works in Denzel injectors, all right? So as you can see in here, we have the, um, the fuel tank where the, um, the fuel goes. Okay, and then we have the high pressure pump. Okay, um, which consists with the plunger and camshaft. All right. The keywords of pump is um, plungers and camshaft, which we will talk about on later during the training. Okay, um, what is a pump? How does a pump work? What is, what what does a pump do in an engine? Uh, a pump is um, is to convert low pressure to high pressure. Well, right. Uh, a fuel comes from the um, the tank, low pressurized, and it goes to the pump, and the pump then convert this low pressure uh, fuel to high pressure, and then it delivers it into the rail. Right. What is a rail? A rail is to store um, the high pressure fuel, um, and then it supplies the high pressure fuel to the injectors. Okay. Um, what is an injector? An injector is is controlled by the ECU, which is the um, engine control unit, to inject the amount of fuel we need um, into the combustion chamber. Okay, uh, what does the injector consist? The injector has a, a, a nozzle, a keyword which we will talk about on later on in the training, an in injector section, and we also have a control chamber. All right. Later on, we will talk about, like I said, um, our pumps, plunger, and drive um, drive shaft and nozzles and control valve we will talk about that when it comes to injectors, okay? So an injector works um, basically to inject the amount of fuel we need into the combustion chamber controlled by the ECU, which energizes the injector to inject this amount of fuel we need into the, into the engine or into the combustion chamber, okay? A rail, we have different sensors, which is the pressure sensor and the rail sensor, okay? That's basically how the common rail system works. All right, with that said, um, let's begin with Del, um, Denzel. The evolution of Denzel. What happened? Denzel have been making pumps since 1985, all right? Different pumps in, as time goes on, they've, they've improved the system. As you can see here from e, uh, ECDV3 from 85 um, to 90, and then they've improved the pumps, which is from uh, big, pumps to small pumps as you, can, as you can see in here, okay? This is the evolution of Denzo. So I will just go through rough um, quickly for you guys to see the different pumps Denzo have been made, have been making all the time, okay? Um, 
common royal system, the first generation from 96 to 2000, and the second generation comes from 2002 to 2006. And now they have the latest generation, which is the HP5, okay? HP, HP2 is the compact truck and passenger cars, as you can see in here. And then HP3 after that, and the HP4 and latest one is the HP5, which is not in here, but we will also talk about that later on the train. Okay, for light trucks, medium-sized trucks, you have the HPO, which is the first generation when it comes to um, uh, common rail pumps. Okay, so this is the basics for you guys to see the different pumps Denso have been have been developing over the time and over the years. This is the common rail system. Like I explained earlier, how the common rail system works, a pump to convert a low pressure to high pressure and the rail to store the high pressure as well for us. And then it delivers them to the injectors and the injectors inject the amount of fuel we need into the combustion chamber controlled by the ECU, which is engine control unit. Okay, with that said, this is the basic as well, like I was saying, this is a basic training for you guys to see how the common rail system works. HP, um, different pumps, HP3, uh, with one plunger, we'll talk about that later on, and HP4 with two plungers or two elements, depending where you are in the world, um, you have a different name, plungers or elements in this case. HP4, HP3, we will talk about that later on. All right. How the, um, the pump works, like I said earlier, um, we have the feed pump. The feed pump draws the fuel from the tank to the pump through the um, SCV, which, which is the um, SCV, which is a suction control valve. The uh, low pressure goes through that and then goes to the pump. And the SCV con suction control valve allows the amount of fuel we need into the pump. Okay, and then the suction valve allows the, um, the amount of fuel we need into the plungers. And the plungers actuates the ring cam and the ring cam actuates the, um, the cam shaft or the drive shaft. And when this drive shaft rotates, then the, um, the spring compresses, uh, the, pl the plunger compresses the spring and then the pressure is generated inside the pump and then it comes out from there to the rail pressure, to the rail line in here. And then this high pressurized fuel goes to the rail. Okay, we have feed pump, SCV, suction control valve, um, suction valve and the delivery valve to prevent the high pressurized fuel going back into the tank. And then we have a temperature sensor to sense the temperature and the feed pump, which is a very important part in this HP3, HP4 pumps to draw the fuel from the tank to the pump. This is um, the diagram for you to see the different spare parts you need. All these parts are important. Before you assemble any, um, any pumps, you have to make sure that all the parts are in good working order. How to do this? You may need some tools to verify this for you, or you may need experience to verify this by yourself. But most of these parts you can physically see. When it comes to pumps, it's easy. It's easy to assemble and easy to fix. So and easy, easy to identify the faulty and bad pumps. You can just see it by eye, okay? Like I said, if you have any questions, don't forget you can always ask the questions in the Q&A option in the menu. You can see it there, okay? As I was saying, plunger are the most important part in these pumps. If the plungers are worn, the pump won't, won't be able to generate any pressure. So we have to make sure that uh, the plungers are not worn. So that's important. And the SCV, which is the control suction valve, is also opening and closing. We have to make sure that these parts are in good working order. You have to test them before putting them together. Okay, and important to have all the gasket kit, et cetera. This is a diagram how the um, cam movement works inside the, um, inside the pump. As I was saying, as the camshaft uh, actuates the ring cam, the ring cam, when um, there's upper side in the um, camshaft, when that upper side gets to a level, it, it compresses the, um, the spring in here, okay? And that compression compresses the spring and then that, that compression generates the pressure um, from, the, uh, from the tank to the, um, 
inside the uh, sorry inside the pump okay and then the pressure fill goes to the rail basically that's how the uh, movement um, diagram works inside the um, the pump again the same diagram but <laughs> from when from when the um, the low pressure goes into the um, the pump so we get a fill from the from the tank in here goes through the SCV allowing the amount of fill we need and then from there it goes to the um, delivery suction valve as you can see in here and then the suction valve opens and let the amount of fill we need into the uh, element or plungers and the plungers compresses the amount um, the amount of uh, the amount of fill we need inside the pump to generate that pressure we need okay so all these parts are important the suction valve, SCV, plunger, spring is all important, making sure that they are in good order before putting them together is an important factor. All right, then we have the HP4. HP4, as time goes on, what have, um, what have Denso have done and many other brands? They have uh, improved uh, the pumps, smaller size, they have, they have um, reduced the size to smaller, and then they've improved the, um, they've improved the, uh, the pressure. All right. In this case here, you can see that we have uh, three plungers. Okay, as you can see in here, HP4 has uh, better, uh, more pressure than the HP2. That's the uh, HP3. All right, that's an additional element as you can see in here. All right. In HP3 we have two. In HP4 we have three, as you can see in here. And also the um, the volume is also controlled by the v SCV or VCV. And in this case, like I said earlier. To regulate the amount of uh, fuel that goes into the pump. Okay, this is the HP4 uh, diagram for you guys to see the difference. All right, we have three um, three plungers and the suction valve. The same the same principle. So I don't have to go again. Um, what I explained earlier, the same the same principle. The plunger, the spring, and um, one thing actuates the other, and at the end. What happens is it generates the pressure inside the pump and they deliver the high pressure in here that goes to the rail. This is diagram for you guys to see what is uh, what parts we need, what parts we're looking for. All the parts are identified for your um, identification for you for to help you to know what parts you need to order or what parts you will have to uh, you you have to have more attention or have to look it, um, you have to look into. All right. All the parts are important, so don't don't take that which part is more important. They're all important, all right. But for me, uh, the plunger are the main main part that you must take um, into consideration. The plungers and the SCV, which is here, uh, the suction control valve and the feed pump. As I said, they're all important. Okay. <clears throat> this is another diagram for you guys to see how the low pressure gets into the pump. Um, and from the low pressure to high pressure, from high pressure to the um, to the rail. Uh, the blue line, if free flow, the blue line here. The blue line is the low pressure from the tank. Okay, uh, low pressure from the tank, it, uh, and then the suction valve when it rotates, it then is, um, draws the fuel from the um, from the tank. Okay, into the pump through the SCV. And the SCV, when it's energized um, by the uh, ECU engine control unit, open and closes, allowing the fuel, um, the fuel going into the pump, as you can see in here. And then the SCV also open and closes the amount of fuel we need into the um, the plungers, and the plungers actuates um, the spring to compress that uh, that fuel that allows. Um, that fuel that is inside there to uh, generate that pressure. And then from there, it goes to the delivery valves in here, as you can see, that goes to the rail, okay? That's how the high pressure is um, generated from the tank to the pump um, to the rail. This is the element for you to see as well, um, which all identified by name, plungers, camshaft, or drive shaft, depending, um, how you want to call it, and then the ring cam, the ring cam, the ring cam um, actuates the um, the ring cam. Sorry, yeah. If you go here, the eccentric cam, like I was saying, this, the camshaft and the eccentric cam here actuates the ring cam, and the ring cam actuates the plungers, and the plungers actuates the spring, and the springs um, generate the pressure we need into the pump. 
okay? And late, uh, the latest pump we have as well is the um, HP5 dental pumps, all right? I do not have the, um, the diagram to show you today, but um, if you need it, you can always ask me and I can share that with you guys. Um, as you can see, it's only one plunger, one side, but the pressure is higher than the, the, HP, uh, the HP3 and HP4. It's the latest generation. So basically, this is how um, the pumps works. With that said, we will now have to go to um, the injectors. The injectors are more electronic, so they need more adjustment. All right, it's more, you need more tools, more experience, more everything to, to repair these injectors. All right, in today's training, we will go through how this injector works and what parts uh, we, we have to look for and how to repair these injectors and how to test them. All right, I will share with you guys a quick demo on our software, how to um, calibrate these injectors, how to test them, and also how to measure the, um, the shims as well. We will go through that later on. All right, so from 97 to um, 2001, we have the first generation Denso injectors, which is the X1, X2. All right, from 2002, Upward, we have the, um, the second generation, which is G2, G3, and G4 as well. We, some of these are uh, piezo, um, piezo solenoid. It's not, it's not um, solenoid magnets. All right. So the differences we will talk about as well is um, from, like I said, uh, from one, 120 or 1,200 bars, they have gone to 1,350 bars pressure. And then the G2 is 1,800 bar pressure. So they all, as time goes on, they've improved um, this injection. Why they have to do this? It, the, the new regulations, depending where you, are, where you are in the world, some countries you have to have um, the injectors injecting the amount of fuel you need into the combustion chamber to avoid contamination. So with that said, that's why many, um, many brands, they now uh, change from solenoid to piezo injectors, all right? Piezos are more, um, they energize faster and these are more better controlled. So all these injectors, all the latest injectors, they inject the exact amount of fuel we need in each step of our journey. All right, Denso, different injectors over the time. So we have X1, like I said earlier, from 97 onward, and then X2, and then we have here the G2, G3, G4, piezo or solenoid um, options you have. So now we will talk about how this um, injector works simply. The first generation, which is X1, all right? They consist in two two-way valves as well. You can see here, the inner side is fixed, doesn't move, and the outer side is movable, all right? I will come to that when they move and how they move and when they have to move and what happened when they move. We will talk about that as well. As, as I was saying, all the parts are important in every single step you're doing. But in, when it comes to injector, we have two important sex, which is the nozzle. The nozzles are, uh, for me, 100% they're the most important part you have to take. Um, you have to take into consideration when you're assembling them, making sure that they are uh, always standards. Um, the nozzle and also the control, the control chamber, making sure that the, um, the control valves are all in good uh, working order before putting them together and all the measurements are taken uh, prior to that. Okay, with that said, now you ask a question, how do I check if a control valve is, um, is in good working order? Injectors, you cannot, you cannot do that by, by looking at it. So then that's why in Lucas, we have created a test, um, a calibration equipment to do that for you. The calibration equipment is there for, um, to verify the valve for you and also to take the measurement to tell you what size of seam you need per step. We will talk about that later on, like I said. Then we have uh, the X2. As time goes on, they've improved. They're not, gonna, they're not going to uh, make it any worse. So you have to make it, they have to improve what is already in the market. So from X1 to X2, it's more compact and more precise. Imagine, so this is was 2007 onward. So from X1 to X2, they've improved the compact and preciseness in these injectors. And it open and close it directly from, the, from here. 
So it's not movable or uh, fixed. In this case, it's um, open and closed direct from here. As I was saying here, when you connect the injector to the rail, the high pressure fuel goes in here. We will talk about that, what happens when the injector is energized. We will talk about that later on. But this is, as we hear now, you can see the red line here is the pressure fuel in here. So the, um, the pressure fuel goes to the, um, uh, goes, yeah, it, this is the high pressure line from the injector connected to the rail and the pressure and the high pressure fuel is in here. And then it goes to the control chamber to the nozzle. What happened then? I will explain that um, in our later on. Okay. And then we have now we've gone to um, the latest generation, which is G2, G3, G4 as well. All right. What happened here is they've improved the ceiling, meaning this injector should last longer than the um, X, X2. They've improved the ceiling, they've improved uh, the injection control. Like, as, like the same, again, as I was saying, uh, with this new regulation, we have to make sure that we have to make sure that the injectors are injecting the amount of fuel we need. We don't need this injector to inject any less or any more. So we need to have these injectors in figures, always standards, that's important. So hence why we have developed all this new equipment to help you to do that. So then you cannot do that by taking all the parts, put the injector on, and then that's it. You cannot do that. So you need this part to help you to do that. We will um, talk about that later on, uh, this equipment, how does this equipment help you to get the, um, to the um, to comply with the new regulation. We will talk about that later on. All right. So the G2 is improved ceiling and wear resistance uh, and the injection control as well. So you have more injection control in these injectors. All right. uh, and high, pre um, high pressure goes in uh, from the rail to here and then it goes straight into the control chamber and the nozzle. What happened? We will talk about that in the next slide. Okay, how was that? Um, this is um, the base, again, another explanation for, for you to see what happens when the injects, when there's no injection into the injector, when the ECU is not energizing the, um, the solenoid, what happens? Mm -hmm. What happens is, so we have um, the high pressure line connected to the rail. So the, the pressure that goes into the pump is the same level as in the control chamber and the nozzle. If that happens, if the uh, if the pressure in these two sections here is the same, the nozzle would not open, but the the level of pressure is the same. So it does mean that there's no injection, but the the um the ECU is not energizing the uh, the solenoid or the injector in this case. So we have the same level of uh, the same level of um, the pressure inside the injector, the control chamber and the nozzle. So if that in that case there's no injection, there's no energized, there's no, um, no injection, the nozzle is closed. So what happened when, when the ECU sends, um, indicates the injector to inject, what happened here is, so we have the right high pressure here, as you can see. And then when the ECU energized the injector, the control valve goes up, as you can see here, in here is closed, as you can see, and in here the control valves goes up and open the passage, as you can see in here. And what happened is that all the pressure in the control chamber goes to the nozzle, and the nozzle cannot hold the pressure, so the nozzle needle will have to lift. So when that nozzle uh, nozzle needle lift, the um, the fuel then has to go to the nozzle to inject the amount of fuel we need, all controlled by the um, all controlled by the sims we've choose to build with these injectors. So that's why I said it's important to know what, si what sim size you have to use in each step. All this, all this, um, the amount of uh, the amount of this TVW, this control valve has gone up. Um, it's important. It's, it's all controlled by the sims. All the sim size indicates that. All right. So the TVW goes up. The pressure drops to the nozzle, and the nozzle needle goes up, and the and the fuel goes through the nozzle, uh, and then inject into the combustion chamber. Uh, so this is how uh, the injection starts. Again, this is pretty obvious. What happens when end of injection? The ECU stop energizing the injector, and the pressure from the um, nozzle it goes back 
to his original position, which is the same level as the control chamber. The control chamber now, as you can see here, the control valve or the TVW is now back to its place. It's closed. When it closed down, so now that it's all closed, the pressure is the same in the control chamber and the nozzle, so there's no injection. Okay, that's what happened when we start from injecting to end of injection. In this stage here, there's no injection because the um, the ECU stopped energizing the injector. Okay, now we have another important um, important part when it comes to injectors. Most of you may already know, but funny enough, some mechanics doesn't know that. Right, so we have the correction flow code, right, which some people call it the coding code, or in both they call it the IMA. So basically it's a code, um, the code of an injector. All injectors are identified by a code. For me, in my own words, how to explain this for, um, to, to someone to understand. Okay, a code is, is the performance of this injector recorded in a code, all right? It's like a Wi-Fi, all Wi-Fi have a password. Uh, this injector, the code will be the Wi-Fi. All right, so then you uh, will be the password, sorry. The code will be the password for this injector. So you have this injector which, with the coding and that code will, uh, will tell the ECU what, um, how many times you have to energize this injector to inject this amount of fill. So you record all the, uh, the performance of this injector in code and program that code into the ECU. Each time you replace an injector from engine, you have to program this, um, you have to program the code that comes with that injector into the ECU for them to have a uh, better communication. Basically, the ECU will know that this injector, I have to energize this amount of time for this injector to inject this amount of what I need, et cetera. So then the coding is basically that. Okay, um, with that said, as, as I was saying again, um, this is the different, uh, different SIMs we have in Denso injectors in different brands, different size of SIMs you have to measure. So in Denso, we have this, these are the spare parts on G2 and G3 injectors, okay? So we have the control valve, as you can see in here, we need a tool to measure that for us. And we also need to know what SIM size we need here to inject the amount of fuel we need. So how do we know that? One micron can make a difference. So we need, a, we need equipment to measure this same size for us. I will show you a demo with our equipment to do that, okay? Um, all, okay, you have a solenoid in up here, the same spring. We can measure all this for you to say and for you to appreciate as well how, how to measure these sims. How do you know what same size going, goes in here? One, one micron can make a difference. So you need to know the exact size of sim you need per step. Uh, in here, we have a sim under the, um, the spring on the nozzle, uh, a sim in here, sorry, two sims in here, which goes on a magnet to, um, to regulate the, um, the, the distance of the, um, the valve to open or close. We will talk about that on. And then we have the nozzles, okay? And uh, depends what method you are. You need, you need the nozzle that compliant with the OE standards. So then we do have nozzles for you. We do have uh, rebuilding kits for you. It's all you need to know. The reference of injector you're going to assemble and you have a different parts of um, kits in each injector, but you, you need to know what injector you're repairing. These are example of some of the references we do. Uh, we do have spare parts for them, okay? Uh, example, let's say John Deere applications, um, uh, 095 uh, 636. What nozzle do you need? Uh, what valve do you need? The application that goes in. This is all here. All you need to do, ask the questions. We were able to um, supply that for you. Okay, more spare, more parts, more references for you to see. Okay, again, this is the most important part of the training. How to repair these injectors? How do I know when, um, if the valves is okay? How do I know what sim size I need to, um, I need to put in, in an injector? These tools here, they're here to help you to, um, to know that. Uh, we have the EDR 720, which is the manual uh, measurement to measure the sim size you need per step of injector. It's a multi-brand collaboration, collaboration equipment, Bosch, Denso, Cut, and Siemens Video. You can do all those uh, injectors with this, equipment here, 
<clears throat> with that said, we have the EDR 710, which is um, semi-automatic, all right? You can do um, multi-brand as well, same as the other one. You can also um, measure the spring, the spring force or the spring tension. You can measure the spring to know if the, if the spring is in good working order. Uh, what happened in the in the same um, in the same software? Uh, it also shows you the steps you have to follow to know what you're doing. So it's a guide to help you to assemble this injector, any injector. Database with talk values. As again, anyone can come and use this, this equipment if you follow the instructions. And the last one on this equipment is the EDR 700. It's totally automatic. You can do up to three injectors, Bosch injectors, but if you're using Denso, you can do one Denso at a time. You can measure all the sims. You can also confirm if the, um, the control valve is, um, is in good working order with this equipment. Uh, and also you can measure the spring force, okay? Technical drawing, I will show you that now. And database with the torque value to know the tightening you need and as well as the electrical resistance on the injectors. So let me quickly show you how the EDR 700 will do the measurement on these injectors. All right. Erika, can you confirm if you can see the, um, my screen? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so this is the EDR 700. It's a demo, so you may expect, you may see some, something might go wrong, but I'm, I'm hoping not. So you have Bosch, as I was saying, Delphi shouldn't be here, but you have Bosch, Denso, Siemens. When it comes to Caterpillar, you have, um, you can select cut and select preset value. And this is all the applications we do in Caterpillar injectors. As you can see, Parkins to actually, um, H-U-E-I, but we're not doing packs today, so we're doing Denso. We go in Denso, you do, you select on preset values, click on okay, you type on the reference, let's select uh, 336, yeah, 636, last three digits. The G, uh, G2 injector, we click on here, perform test. Okay, so this is what happened when you come and you come to build, assemble an injector, Let's say I'm, a, I'm new into this business. I don't know how to assemble this injector. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, something you see, something's going wrong now. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. See, now I cannot show, choose my. One second, guys. Something is going around now, like I was saying. All right. Uh, okay, let's do it this way. We click from step, step one. So it's going to measure us if this um, valve is, in, uh, is good to use. Okay, we click on continue. And now the robot is doing all the measurement for us. All right, so it's confirmed that this valve is okay, it's 0 0.15, 0 0.015, it can be used. We close that, we go to the next step. The next step will tell you what to do. It's telling you, now you have, can you please tighten the, um, uh, the knot? You click on here, it gives you the figures you need. We're looking for 45 hand tight, five newton meters, minimum 42 to 48. We got the right, close that. And now we go to the next step here is, uh, here we go. Now it's measuring here to, it's measuring the body of the injector with the valve in there and also the, um, the solenoid to tell us what seam size we need to um, build with this, uh, with this injector, with the um, solenoid and the uh, injector body. You click on continue, so it's measuring first the, um, the body, the injector body, and then we'll, from there, we'll go to measure the, um, the solenoid. Measuring both, uh, both path now is telling us that the seam you need for this particular area is 1.278. So now we have the seam size, we put the seam in there and we go to the next step. What happened? What, have, what, what do we have to do now? Okay, so as you all know, 
uh, there's a spring under that um, under the, um, the the solenoid. All right. So now it's going to tell us that what sim we need to put under this under the spring. So we're going to measure this spring and the where the spring will, will be placed in here and and where the sim will be uh, added, which is in the, um, the solenoid. All right. We close that. We continue that. Now it's telling us to uh, to follow the instructions. We everything is fine here. We continue put the uh, instrument in zero. We do that. And now put the sim inside this adapter. You've done that, and then continue. And now it's taking the measurement, checking the um, the spring force, the force of that spring, and then we have to enter the figure that's shown in the screen. Okay. In this case here, I think is uh, should be minus sixteen, minus sixteen, I think. So at the end, it would ask me to enter the figures I can see in here. It will be minus sixteen. We enter that, and now it's measuring the um, the solenoid to tell us what sim size we need. The sim size you need uh, that goes with the not uh, with the spring is one point one five five. All right. So there is a nominal which is this sim here, and then you have a range with a lower and the maximum sim. If you don't have one point one point one five five, then you look we're looking for one point zero nine to one point two one five. Any, any of this, um, any, any sim between this range, it should be okay. All right, we close. <clears throat> All right, so now with that, we've done that. Now it's telling us that, can you type the, um, the solenoid into the injector body? We've done, we do that now, we continue. Again, hand tight, five millimeters. We're looking for 31 and between 30 to 32 will be okay. Or we're looking for the 31 here. We've done that. And now we're going to measure the spring force on the um, the spring force on the nozzle to tell us uh, what sim size we need on that. The same steps as well. So we don't we don't do that. We just skip the step. And then again, if you don't if you have done that step, now you can tie the nozzle knot. The nozzle knot again, five millimeter hand tight, thirty eight to forty two. We've gone the right close. <coughs> All right, and finally, it's going to check the resistance and the insulation test for you. As I was saying, if you have all this green, this injector, it should pass. If you test this injector in any um, always standard test bench, this injector should pass because you follow all the instructions um, given by the OE because all these equipment is being approved by OE standards. So if this injector, as you can see in here, is all green, this injector should pass without any problem in any test bench. This, uh, like I was saying, you need this equipment to help you to do this, okay? Um, now we've done the calibration. Now we assemble the injector. How do we test them? Okay, we do have a different test benches. Sorry, let me quickly share that with you. These are test benches, okay? Test benches, we have a different test benches for different garages, all right? So we have the EDT 321, 320, all right, it's, um, it's a manual, yeah, it's a manual test bench, all right? You have to enter the figures manually, as you can see here with tubes. So all this is, uh, you can test only one injector at a time. Um, we've now, <coughs> we've now created all our test benches up to 2,700 bars. And the cooling system is also uh, built in, okay? You can test piezo injectors, which are the uh, latest one, and, and as well as the solenoid injectors, all right? So, and then from there, these are the basic one. From there, you have the EDT free, uh, 315, all right? Again, it's a 2,200 bar pressure now. We've improved that. Um, you can test Detroit four pins injectors, common rail, uh, piezo, and solenoid injectors. Trust me. And you can test as well, uh, sorry, the, um, this one here, you don't have to enter the figures manually. The software does that for you. How? We have, we have, um, we have developed a high, press, um, high precise digital flow meter inside the, um, the test bench, which reads the flow for you. You don't have to do anything manually. The test bench, you can click um, perform step one to finish. So the test bench will do all the tests for you, all right? So you don't have to enter anything manually. You can, you can test one injector while you are repairing another injector. That's all you need, okay? 
cooling system is also included. And then from these two here, there are table test benches. You can put it on the table and start testing injectors for small, for small workshops. And then from there, we've developed another test bench, which is tank one in this case, the ADT310. Again, as it says here, 2,200 bars, but the new, um, the new generations are 2,700 bars, okay? It's a standing uh, test bench. You can test one injector at a time, as well as um, you can also code them. You can code all your injectors with uh, this injector as well, uh, this test bench as well. But in this one here, you cannot code them because it's only for small garages, just to see if the injector is injecting the amount, the right amount of fuel um, or, or, we, or we request it in this case. So you can do that with that. But in this one here, you can code them. You can code them in the 311, 310 as well, one injector at a time. And latest one here is the EDT300. You can test up to four injectors at a um, at time. You can test up to four the same injectors at a time, the same reference of injector at a time. Okay, multi brand, um, piezo and uh, common, uh, sorry, piezo and solenoid injectors as well. You can also code all four injectors. And yeah, so, and also has the cooling system built in. So this is basically, this is the basic test bench we have, but we do have more different type of test benches. If you need to know more, you just have to ask Eric or myself. All right, so how do we test them? This is, this is, a, um, this is our software for testing, okay? We click on okay. You select the reference here. What injector you want to test? Um, you can select any. Bosch, Delphi, Denso, Siemens. Orders will show you here what branch. Caterpillar, Cummins, Orange, MTU, Parkins. You can test all this. All right? But today we're doing Denso. We click on Denso. You have two options. You have manual or automatic. I'm sure none of you will use manual. You go to automatic sequence. You click on automatic. You type the reference. As you can see here, all the ones in green are the ones that need to be called. All right, so for me, they are the latest injectors. So all the latest injectors has to be coded, has to be programmed into the ECU. All right, we can select any injector, let's say uh, 580. Uh, last three digits, click on 580 here. Okay, how many injectors do you want to test? One, two, or three? Let's select only one in this case. Okay. So what happened? Okay, good. So we go to menu here. You have, like I was saying, you can start testing. You can start testing while you build another injector for testing. So you don't have to um, be present when the injector is testing these test benches. You come on, perform from step one. If you worry the bench to stop when there's an error, you can just come here, click on here. And there, if there's any error and you are not present, the bench will stop by itself. So you don't have to be there, as I said. All right, let's go from step one. So now the software will run all the tests for us. So we don't have to be um, present looking at the bench. And when we come back, we can see what happens in each step of the test, all right? So this is the cleaning process. Cleaning process is also important. So to make sure that there is no air inside the injector, there's no air and then we have the right amount of correct reading. So we have to make sure all the air has, uh, bleed out. This the opening pressure is also important to do. Um, this is the start of injection. The test bench will read that for you, as I was saying. Start of injection, there's a range um, between 300 to 400 or it, yeah. And then again, you have a leak test, making sure that the nozzle is closed, there's no leakage, and the, um, the control valve is also closed, there's no overflow or overfilling anywhere. So they're making sure that, so this is fine. Again, before we do, the full load, we, we do another cleaning process to make, in, okay, to make sure that there is no air inside. All the airs are built, um, bleed out, that's important. Okay, done. Now we start the full load test, all right? The full load test is the delivery of, of this injector when you are in high speed, all right? So there's a minimum of 39 to 60. So we have to make it so that this is in between range and the backflow in here. Okay, so this is it. This is what we're looking for. And, and then we go to emission point. Uh, as you can see here, the pressure that the bench is um, 
uh, is uh, is up to 800 bar in this case our pulses and the temperature good temperature for to test any injector is between 40 to 42 in, um uh yeah degrees okay and the delivery as well so we're looking for 5 to 9.5 so this injector is good this is what you want to say if you use one of our equipment to calibrate this injector. Any injector you calibrate, this is what you're looking for. And if you follow all the instructions, this is what we, what you will get. And this injector should pass in any um, OE standard test benches. It should be uh, it should pass. Uh, the last test now is the coding. So now um, the bench is going to generate a code for this injector. Like I said before, is the performance of this injector in each step of the um, this test. So this code will be used to um, to program into the ECU. All right, it takes it takes less than one minute to generate code for four injectors. Sorry. All right, it's um, coding in progress. Now the code is here. You click on code. This is the code. Um, it's being generated for this injector. You can print it or you can do what you, whatever you want to do with this code, but making sure that this code goes out with this particular injector, okay? That done, you go to um, print, all right? Customer, customer printing, you can put here your company name or whatever. Uh, here, this case will be Prima, or, and then you can put here, you know, what vehicle you tested this injector for, the identification, your customer name here uh any name you can put in here so that this is customized customer printout so you can just print out the way you want it you can go preview to see what happened in each step if you wasn't here so you come back you want to see what happened with this injector good all right it's now opening the report for you okay that's the report for you sir you got the operator name and the reference of injector you've uh, you've choose to test this injector and the um, the coding for injector number one is this. We didn't test any two or three or four injectors. We tested only one. And what happened in the opening and start of injection is all here. And the delivery as well. So what we're looking for is the minimum and the maximum. So we got 49 is in between. And as well, 18.8 is in between 24. It's not maximum, it's 29. And between 4.9 to 9.3, 7.3 is what we're looking for. And 0.8 to 4.2. That's this injector. It should be. It should work in any um, engine you've installed it. Basically, this is um, how the common rail system works, and how we test these injectors in our test benches, and how we repair them uh, with our um, calibration equipment. All right. So that's the end for me. If you don't have any questions, I think that's the end for me. But Again, if you have any questions out of this training, you can always contact Erica. Uh, I'm sure you should have a, you should have her email somewhere. Um, you can contact her for any question in the training. Anything that you think that um, I haven't included in the training, please feel free to um, to add Erica to add it for you. Or if you want any other information that can be shared with you. Once again, I thank you all for your time, and thank you all for joining us today. Thank you so much. Erica, there's um, any questions? Yes, I do have a couple here. Uh, one is, um, you showed us what, uh, you showed us to test for in one to four injectors. Do you have anything anything to test pumps? Yes, I did include pumps here because it will take a um, little bit more time. Like I was saying, time is money in many garages. So I didn't add that, but we do have test benches to test pumps which is the, uh, our EDT 200 can test all common rail pumps, CP4, CP5 as well. So yeah, that can be shared with any of um, of the attendees today. If they need it, we can share them with you, with them. Yeah, we do have pumps, test that. Okay, um, okay, thank you. Uh, the other question, uh, what does the injector repair kit contain? Okay, that's on, on my side. Uh, okay. That, <laughs> yeah. So Thank basically you. what uh, um, Ibrima showed in the image is basically what it will have. It will be a nozzle, uh, the control valve, uh, O-rings, uh, the nozzle nut, uh, pins, and also uh, a washer, the washers will be, which will be optional. Um, yeah. Okay. 
Another question here. Uh, what tools do you have for injectors? What tool we have? Oh, okay, that's a good question. I mean, I've shown you how to um, how to calibrate these injectors, but I haven't shown you what tools we have. Good questions. I mean, but to reply to the questions, Erica, it's very important to know what injectors they will repair. If it's mm -hmm. then we have a um, toolbox to repair denso injectors, a toolbox where it contains all the parts you will need to repair these injectors from disassembling, assembling, all what you need is in that toolbox. That can be shared with them Eric, if they need it. Yeah, we do have, we do have a, a toolbox for denso injectors. Okay, I, I got your name uh, from here for, for Preston who, answer, who asked this question. So I will share with him. <laughs> He's asking me the toolbox number. So yes, I will share that information with you because I'm sure Prima doesn't have it here right, right away. But I will, <laughs> I will share those details with you about what it is and, uh, and what it contains as well. Um, because uh, if, and again, I'll, I'll send it over to your email and if there's anything else you need on that regards, um, unless uh, you can tell us right now, Ibrima, are you looking for it? Looking for it, but then I, I think it's better for you to share that with, with them. I mean, it's here, it's hundred percent here, but I mean, it's, it would take time. I don't want, I don't want to waste that time though. It's here, as yeah. you can see, um, Denzo toolbox repairing injectors. Here we go. Okay. LDFT 1698. That's the, um, the toolbox you need to repair tensile injectors. And in here you have the toolbox to extract the filters on the uh, G2 injectors. Yeah, we do have all what you need. I mean, we're here, we, we, we are here for that, to help you to, um, to assemble or to repair your injectors. So yeah, any, any questions you have, just ask Erica. Okay, yeah, okay. I'll share those numbers over this same file that, um, Every my sharing, and in case anybody is interested, uh, let me know, and I will I will send over that information. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, which is exactly what I'm getting. I'm writing. Uh, can I get a copy of that PDF? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, I will share that for sure. Uh, this is actually what every my sharing is a smart catalog. Um, I can I can share that with whoever is interested. Uh, it's basically will tell you all the equipment we have, but also the tools that will be able to help you not only with the equipment, like as in replacing or um, maintenance parts, but more on, also on the tools that we have for each uh, of those systems. So it will give you a more uh, detailed explanation of what Ibrima just showed. Right. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna send a copy to everybody, I guess. <laughs> Perfect, there we go. Yeah, uh, another question is, um, yeah, uh, do we have replacement parts for HP3 and HP4 pumps? Uh, that is more on my side. The Thank you, yeah. <laughs> Yes, the replacement parts that we do have are basically not main parts. We mostly have mirroring valves, uh, seals, and repair kits. Uh, on the pump side, once uh, once a pump goes has an issue, it is sometimes um, usually more expensive to repair it than than what it is. So. Uh, we are focusing a lot. That's why we are focusing a lot on the injector side of, of the parts. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Hold on. Let me see what else I have here. Okay. Um, another one. Uh, do we have further training available? Yes, we do. Uh, well, as, as Ebrima shared, this is uh, just a very brief presentation of the information that we have, uh, not only on the part side, but, and you know, in how to repair them, but we do have training uh, that we are gonna start releasing where it's uh, more of a hands-on because again, this is just the theoretical part, not so much the hands-on part on how to do it. So that will be something that we are also doing a series of. Uh, I will share more information as, as you see my the newsletter that um, sent out from my email. You will also be able to receive that further down. And it, it's usually, a, I wouldn't say it's a day, it's two days that we try to do it. Um, basically, the hours of theory, like right now, will be just a few hours. And everything else is just more hands-on. Going over tools, equipment, and, um, and getting, every, uh, getting everyone to be able to do it with hands-on. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Just to um, just to add this on here, um, 
or training also can be suggested. If you have any um, any training in mind, you can always ask Erica for for any training in mind that you think we should have we should have done, and we're not doing it now. So you can always send us a feedback or a suggestion yeah. what you think that we should be doing. Just email yeah, yeah. Erica. Yeah, we we appreciate any comments, good and bad. <laughs> Hopefully, all good. Uh, but yeah, more on the recommendations of what you want to see. This training in this video, you will be able to see it on the Lucas uh, Lucas channel in YouTube, or if anybody wants the link. Um, and also the other ones that we've been doing with Tony Salas. If any anybody has joined us as well, um, this is just basically the first one that we're doing on this series, which will be more more to where our uh, diesel injection. But we will continue to have every month the ones with uh, Tony Salas, which go from diagnostics to all other range of, of topics. Uh, so if there's anything, I, again, it doesn't have to be related to this. Any other topic that you will be interested in seeing, uh, let us know. And um, well, I'm not getting any more questions, but I guess that's that's all for now. So we'll let everybody go now. Uh, hope you had, uh, well, you, you enjoyed this presentation and that you could take away uh, something from it. And again, let us know what we can do to get this uh, better next time. And if you want to see something else uh, as well. Once again, thank you so much. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you.